efficient use of lighting in general. So to introduce myself, so I'm Katia Tihinuk. So I'm communications and project coordinator in Kodima. So we're Dublin's energy agency, but we also act as regional coordinators for the SEC program in the Dublin and Mideast region. So you can kind of find out a little bit more about how it works in our region on kodima.ie slash SEC. And I suppose just to give a little bit of background about Kodima, where we're coming from. So we were founded in 1997 as a not-for-profit organisation. So we're energy advisors to the local authorities at the centre. So we work with the councils to improve energy use and reduce CO2 in Dublin. So we kind of have a few different strands, research, development, innovation, low carbon project delivery, and then awareness and and communications and engagement. So, for example, you may have heard of us before. So we developed the Home Energy Saving Kit, which is available to borrow from public libraries across Ireland. It's elected public libraries. And then our services are energy monitoring management, again, energy awareness, energy policy and planning, project management and match funding. So just to give a bit of background about ourselves. So that's what we're focusing on at the moment is energy awareness. And from this workshop, you'll be able to firstly choose the most suitable light bulb for each room and each fitting, and just kind of learn a few tips on how you could use lighting more efficiently in your home in general. So for part one on the energy saving light bulbs, did you know actually that switching, so from a traditional incandescent bulb, to the most efficient LED bulb could save you up to 13 euros per year on its running cost. So that doesn't include the cost of buying the bulb, but it's actually the electricity you're using. And I suppose it's great to reiterate that that's just one light bulb. And I'll cover this a little bit later on, but also LED bulbs last up to 10 times longer than a halogen bulb. So you know, if you think about how many light bulbs you have in your house, it could be, you know, good opportunity for significant energy savings. And then there are different things I suppose you need to know in the shop. And I can kind of take you through a few of the most important things to look out for. So I suppose in the past, it would have been a little bit simpler. You kind of just had your, you know, when a light bulb went in your house, you had a few choices, 40 watt bulb, maybe a 60 watt bulb or you know excitingly you might even go for a 100 watt bulb but nowadays it's a little bit more different there's the most efficient well I suppose starting from the right you have your traditional incandescent so it's the least efficient and then you have your oh, then you have your CFL so again it'll be more efficient than your traditional bulb and as you can kind of see in the graphic, they're the typical kind of spiral looking bulbs. And but really the most efficient ones we should be buying is a standard like an LED. And under those you have either a most efficient LED or a standard LED. So, you know, your standard LED would be a lot more energy efficient, but it's still better to get the most efficient LED nowadays. You know, because it's it's not always best to go for the cheapest LED in the shop either. So it's important to consider kind of a few different things here. So things like the energy efficiency of the bulb, the running cost and how long you're going to get out of the light bulb. So on the chart on the right hand side there, you know, you can see you might be in the cost per bulb section so you might be able to actually pick up a traditional bulb depending on where you're able to find it it's harder to find them nowadays for three euros and but if you go left from that a standard led is six euros and then the most efficient led is 14.50 so yeah you can pick up a traditional light bulb for three euros but actually if you look at it its lifespan is one year so you're probably yeah you're probably only going to get a year out of it while an led yeah it's more of an investment it's more expensive to buy but if you look at the standard led it would last you 15 years and then the most efficient one you can get anything up to 50 years so you know the payback is actually much better but you can also see the difference 
in the very bottom. And the second last uh, row is actually in the long run, there's quite a big difference between going for a traditional bulb and a standard LED or even most efficient LED. So I suppose it's really handy if you're looking at why, you know, one, one bulb costs six euros and another LED costs 1450. Why would you? Pay 1450, but actually it has a lower running cost and it lasts 50 years as opposed to the other bulb lasting only 15. So in the very bottom row, you can see the yearly running cost and the cost of one bulb is 60 euros for 50 years. While if you had a standard cheaper LED, it would actually be 100 euros. So there's 40 euro difference in the lifetime cost per light bulb and that's including the cost of buying the actual bulbs and then of course you can see if you go right you can see the big difference it is when you have an incandescent so that's that's just another really thing really good thing to remember you see the yearly running costs there and the big big difference and one thing that's really important to get right is actually that it's all about the lumen so it's not about the wattage. So previously you'd say, well, look, I need something a little bit dimmer. That's 40 watt, a little bit brighter. It's a 60 watt, etc. While actually now, you know, it's completely different and it's all about the lumen. So there used to be a misconception out there that, if, you know, if you go with an energy efficient light bulb, it's just going to be dimmer. It's, you know, you're sacrificing on brightness, but actually that's completely not true. So, for example, if you see the 7 watt LED and there's a 60 watt traditional, but then they all have the same brightness, which is 700 plus lumen. So really you're using very like a lot less energy and you're actually getting the same brightness. And nowadays LED bulbs don't take a long time to actually go to full brightness. And then another thing that would actually be really useful to look out for is the bulbs Kelvin. So that's essentially the color or the tone of the bulb. So, for example, you'd, you'd want to go for a warm tone for sitting rooms, bedrooms. You'd maybe think of something a bit a cooler tone, more towards the blue for and whites for kitchens, bathrooms. And yeah, so there's plenty of options out there. And I suppose that's another common misconception that people may think that, you know, LEDs are a harsh blue light and, you know, incandescents are nice and warm colour tone. Well, that again, that's no longer the case. And another thing as well is very handy to keep in mind is that they come in all types of shapes. So it also depends on where you're using them. So, for example, for track lighting, you would only really use a spotlight. Or for wall sconce, you could use a spiral or a candle. So there's lots of different options there as well, depending on your light fitting and where in the room it is. And as well, really useful thing is to keep an eye on your cap type because there's so many different ones. 22 mils, 15 mils, then there's a screw, there's a smaller screw and all sorts of plugs. And the handy thing would be to just take a photo of your light bulb when it goes and or bring it with you to the shop just to avoid kind of that guessing game in the middle of the aisle. And then in general, so this is all the information is usually right on the box there. So you'd have the, the wattage so you can see it's 11.5 watt. You'd have then the lumen, which is a thousand quite bright. Then you would have the energy efficiency, which is actually a really good one to look out for if you're comparing, for example, two LED bulbs of the same wattage. And then again, the Kelvin, which is the color temperature. And yeah, the lifespan and then the actual type of bulb. And that will also be the fitting that it will fit into. And I know that maybe a lot of information to take in all in one go. So in Kodima, we developed our guide to energy saving light bulbs. So you can download the full guide at kodima.ie slash think energy. And Susan can also put the link into the chat box. So it's easy to find. Now, so that's 
part one and part two, I suppose, is focusing a little bit more just on efficient use of lighting in general. So it's really simple things that can be done, uh, ranging from completely free to a little bit of investment to more of an investment. So these tips come from Kodima's Guide to Home Energy Savings, and this is from the section four, which is on lighting. And again, you can find that on our website. So I suppose our kind of top free tips that are easy to do and are simple things, don't cost any money, is to just maximize the use of daylight, holding off switching on the lights in the evening until necessary, for example, or turning off the lights after leaving a room or when you don't need them. You know, I'm, I'm sure we've all forgotten to turn off a light when leaving the room or we think I'll leave that on sure I'll only be back in five minutes. But I suppose that's still five minutes of the light. The light is using uh, electricity and, you know, or leaving the low lights on in the living room, even though no one's there. But then again, I suppose with all these things, it's really important to balance being well. So, you know, saving energy is great, but it's also really important to always keep in mind safety. So, you know, it's one thing to be turned off all the lights, but it is would be great, you know, and really important for safety to have, for example, a light on on staircases or in a hallway where there might be a trip hazard or outside your front door if you know you're coming and going. So, again, there may be times when it is definitely best to leave the lights on purely in terms of safety, well-being. And then to move on to other free tips we have. So things like cleaning your windows regularly to take advantage of maximum sunlight. You'd be surprised how much that helps. And things like putting your desk in front of the window. So instead of having to use a lamp when you're reading during the day, you can actually use daylight. And things like, you know, avoiding net curtains or blinds which do really reduce the amount of daylight that gets into the room. And I suppose there's other free things you can do. So you can clean your lights, uh, the bulbs and the actual shades. That will also make a difference. Then what could be useful as well is making use of task lighting. So a lamp on your desk instead of having the big light on uh, lighting up the whole room. And then what you could do is also um, use dimmer switches and multiple light switches. So you don't, again, you don't avoid lighting up the whole room. And then I suppose there are a few things that you could do that would be a little bit of spend, but could make a difference. So, for example, you could consider motion sensors. So specifically for, you know, outdoor lights or hallways again, instead of them being left on all the time. or you can buy solar powered um, sensor lights so they don't use any electricity and you don't need cables. And there's other things you can do indoors in terms of installing mirrors around skylights so they can bounce sunlight into the room. Another one is actually with Christmas coming up. If you're buying fairy lights to decorate, you know, why not look out for LED ones? Or, you know, if you're decorating your garden, you could even get solar ones, for example. And other tips, for example, you could paint walls in brighter colours because things like a light yellow or a white, they would reflect 80% of light, while much darker colours like dark greens or, you know, statement colours reflect a lot less light into the room. Um, and then there are other kind of more expensive things, like, for example, in an attic room, you or you could consider installing a skylight. But of course, you know, it's important to make sure that it's well glazed, well insulated, correctly installed, all of that. So that could be another option. So of having a really dark room where you constantly have the lights on. And yeah, so you can also download all these tips in our guide to home energy savings, odima.ie slash think energy. And I also just wanted to signpost. So this was workshop three and the next SEC winter workshop is at 7 p.m. Thursday, 8 December, as Ruth mentioned. And um, I think Susan can also put the link into the chat. 
And finally, uh, another thing I want to say, the SEI has great resources on their website. So if you go to SEI.ie slash home energy plan, you can also sign up for the last week of their campaign. 